Hello, VOD viewers. I uh, forgot to get started recording the VOD, so I didn't go through the what I just said. Okay, words are very hard. Let me start this over. We're going to start, I think, a new career series here. There we go. Perfect. And this is going to be kind of like the Rogue Tech series, like I said, for those of you watching on the stream. Sorry I'm repeating myself, but I definitely am very on the ball today. Perfect. So we're going to start a new career mode here. I don't know what we're going to call this. We'll just call this new stream career. It doesn't really matter that much. And let's hop on in here. I don't know what we're going to focus yet. We can talk about that a little bit. But let's hop on in here and get some of this early career stuff out of the way today, I think. That would be a good thing to have. And let's immediately hop into Mission Control and see what we've got available here. Launch our first vessel. Done. Escape the atmosphere. Done, I think. Uh, yeah. I should have gathered scientific data from Kerbin. <laughs> That's okay. We'll, we'll get both of these done and we'll... Well, actually, no. Um, if I can't get rid of this, you know what? I'm going to start over. Perfect. We're going to head back to the main menu. I've already messed up. We're, we're off to a great start here. <laughs> Wonderful. So we're going to, uh, delete this save. So the new stream career will be deleted. Perfect. And I just load. Okay. I'm so on the ball right now. I need to wake up. Okay. Let me drink some tea here. Perfect. Maybe with a little bit of caffeine. Okay, back to the main venue we go. This is just wonderful. Interspe Interstellar Expedition Incorporated. Mission, send a guy in orbit out of the system. I mean... That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. I kind of like it. Interstellar Expedition Inc. That'll take a while. For sure. And for the flag, we could go with something along the lines of... Like, orbit? I don't know. That's kind of a, a messy flag, in my opinion. I don't love that flag. We could go with trippy. That's an even messier one. <laughs> Beautiful. I suppose we could go with just the world first one, because we're going to be getting a lot of those. I mean, not, you know, like... In terms of our world, but in terms of this Kerbin world, for sure. So we'll go ahead and start that with the default settings there. And let's grab ourselves our real, actual first missions, rather than messing that up. Thanks, I've got it. Okay, so we're going to grab scientific data from Kerbin and launch our first vessel. Perfect. And then we'll hop into the VAB. And inside of the VAB here, we're pretty limited on what we can do, of course. So we're going to grab a Mark 1 command pod, although technically I think we're better off with the onion re-entry module at this time. So we'll grab that. We're not planning on actually launching this in any meaningful capacity right now. All we're going to do is, I suppose we could put a parachute on it and we could put on a flea. But all we're going to do here is get ourselves some science for the moment. A mystery goo inline. Sounds good. That's a tiny little inline. I mean, that is Mystery Goo inline. So <laughs> we're going to get a non-inline one. There we go. Cool. And that's all we have for science for the moment. So we're just going to attach like that. And that's all we're going to grab. There's no point in even saving this. It's completely irrelevant. Okay. Now we find out if we have that frame dropping bug that we had last time. Hopefully not. I should have tested that, but I definitely didn't. Uh, this seems okay. Yeah, it seems fine. Cool. So all we're going to do here is... I'm just wondering where X Science went. <laughs> I didn't uninstall it. I didn't make any changes there. Okay, well, we'll just do this the old-fashioned way for now. We'll observe this mystery goo. And we'll keep that. Um, that's interesting. And then we will recover this. There we go. So that's fine. Yeah, I didn't make any changes to the mods. X-Science should still be there, but I don't know. Maybe it broke. Who knows? You can see here most of the mods are still there. Actually, let me just fire up Seacan here real quick here. Uh, what do we got? Okay. Seacan took a bit to fire up there and then fired up three Seacans. I love it. 
and then failed. Okay. Maybe Seacan is broken. That might be causing some of that. Uh, for now, we're going to hop into the R&D here, and we can grab either Basic Rocketry or Engineering 101. Obviously, we grab Basic Rocketry. So we'll take that, and we will leave this facility. And we should have finished up that contract, so we'll grab Escape the Atmosphere next, and we'll hop into the VAB. While that's loading, let me check to see for Seacan here. Um, yeah, X Science is installed. And there are no available updates. There is an update. No, there is. There are no updates. Let me refresh it. Okay. Uh, no. Looks good. No updates. Confusing. Okay, well, we're just going to drop in a single T100 fuel tank. And we're going to bring in a swivel here. Because all we're going to look to do is launch our craft. Okay, so we'll launch this. All we need is to finish that contract. And we're not going to have to go very far, hence just the T-100. Cool. So here we are on the pad. And how much burn time do we actually have in this? Seven seconds. That's not a lot of burn time, to be sure. Okay. There we go. Let's get a little bit of flight here. Cool. We'll observe that mystery goo. And I want to bring this down a bit. Okay. I'm going to launch the parachute. Cool. Okay. Only mildly awkward, but we're good. <laughs> Only mildly awkward. Cool. Can we get additional mystery goo from here? Probably, but we've already gotten it. So we're just going to recover that. And that was our launch first vessel contract. Obviously, that was not intended to go any further than that. So that's absolutely fine. Beautiful. So we'll get that contract cleaned up. That also got us up to 15 science. And now we have access to all of these guys. So Orbit Kerbin is probably the one we'll take next. There we go. And then we'll hop into our R&D here. And we'll grab our Engineering 101 so that we get access to the thermometer as well as decouplers. Both of those are very handy, and we can't afford anything else right now. Survivability would not be a bad thing for the barometer plus the service bay and heat shields. So that's definitely something that we can do. We can also gather science from around the KSC if we really wanted to. I tend to not do that, generally speaking, but that is something that we can definitely do. So at this point, we need to get a little bit further. So we have, do we have access to any decouplers? We do, the TD-12. Okay, now this has a built-in ablative heat shield on it, so that's great. We obviously don't have access to the service bay yet, but we can strap a thermometer onto here. There we go. And with that, we'll have a little bit more science. And all we've got is the T-100s. So I'm just gonna go to like a T-400 here. There we go. And we'll get rid of that. Cool. So what is our plan here? Well, we don't have a lot of Delta V. I can tell you that right now, and this is horribly messed up. So let's do something a little bit more along the lines of that. 1300 meters per second. This is obviously not going to make it into orbit. But it can probably break out of the atmosphere and finish up this contract. Maybe. It can maybe do that. But we can certainly get a bunch of, like, land speed records. For sure. Let's go ahead and launch that. And let's see what we've got. So, I'm not expecting this to get, like, super duper far. Well, first thing we should do is definitely grab the barometer reading here. And let me just engage our engines. There we go. We can grab another mystery goo reading here if we wanted to. But I'm not going to. We're going to reset that. We're going to grab our barometer reading here. And we'll keep that. Uh, can we transfer that data into here? No, not... Well, we could, I think, if we got... Could Jeb transfer it? Can pilots do that? No. Uh, well, maybe it's out of range. 
Regardless, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to hop Jeb back in and we're going to recover this. That'll get us our barometer data. So that's fine. So with our barometer data, we are going to maybe be able to get a little bit more in the survivability tree. Uh, that was 2.4 science. What are you currently doing? This is a new career mode that we are doing that apparently our goal is to send a guy out of the system. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, it'll take a little while to get there for sure. So we performed an EVA test at home. That's always nice, but we don't have the tech right now to get anything else. So we're going to get ourselves an, a little bit more science with another very, very brief hop here. This is not going to be any more than the last hop, but it's just to get the barometer science. Cool. So let's get in here. Once that loads on in, there we go. And we don't really want to be on max throttle, do we? Probably not. Like, one-third throttle should be sufficient. I still wonder where X science went, but sure. I mean, we can see most of the dependencies are here. I don't know. Strange. But off we go. And we are going to log this temperature. And observe our mystery goo. Cool. And let's make our way back on down. Ideally with a propulsive landing. Um, that was not what I wanted to press. <laughs> I'm really, really dumb. I forgot that the staging was in between our... Yeah, I... That, that's my own fault. <laughs> okay, uh, back to the Space Center we go. I was having Kerbal withdrawals since you finished the Asteroid Mining series. Glad to see you back. What is the goal today? Well, the goal is to be less incompetent than that. So what happened there was I was completely an idiot. And I, I forgot that we added the decoupler. This right here. I completely forgot about that. I meant to fire the parachute. It didn't happen. So Jeb is dead. He will be back eventually. The default settings does have him respawn. So that's fine. Um, we did lose the science, so we'll have to do that again. And let's not be dumb about it this time. Cool. So here's what I'm going to do. All we're looking for is that tiny little hop. Right? So I'm going to move this guy down. We're going to fire our parachute. Not quite now, but very, very close to now. So we're going to throttle up a tiny amount to about here. Uh, is this armed? It is armed. Okay. Um. It didn't do what I expected it to. It never fired the engine there. Okay, that's really weird. We're going to revert that flight back to launch. We were throttled up and it never actually fired the engine. Bizarre. Okay. Let's try that one again. We never left the pad, so it's all good. So, we are going to move this decoupler way up here. I don't want this decoupler to fire right now. And we are going to fire up our engine. Now it's actually burning. Good. Up we go. We're going to observe our mystery goo and we're going to get our barometer reading. And we're going to start throttling down. And I'm going to fire the parachute here. There we go. We shouldn't have to propulsively land. But there we go. No problem at all. SAS can be off. This will be fine. It did fire. It didn't have enough throttle. I didn't notice it firing at any rate, but it's okay. Ooh, that's a lot more speed than I was expecting, but we're all good. Cool. So now we're going to grab the... Or no, we already grabbed the thermometer reading from the ground. That's fine. That's fine. So at this point, we are going to have a little bit of science here. Is it enough to do anything? Maybe. It might be. Yeah, we've got 20 science. Beautiful. So we can grab survivability or general rocketry if we wanted to get our hands on the T-200. I don't think that's strictly speaking necessary right now. I think for the moment, getting our hands on the barometer and the service bay is much better for us. So we'll grab that and hop into the VAB. Perfect. And from here, I'm actually going to remove this decoupler. We don't need it right now. We will put on the service bay. And that's a mystery goo unit. Right, right, right. 
Okay, so we'll put on the service bay here. Open that on up. And we'll move this on in. Cool. And then the thermometer. We'll move that into there as well. And then we can put in the barometer. There we go. Cool. And that's all of our science for the moment. Although we could put a KER in this too. That would be absolutely fine. Fantastic. Okay. So we then reassign this here. Now there's no decoupler here, but that's fine. We don't currently need one. So we'll save that as untitled spacecraft, I guess, and put that out on the pad. I'm still wondering why X Science apparently broke. I don't think there was a KSP patch since I last pay played, and I definitely didn't change any of the mods. Yeah, just looking through CCAN here, it appears installed. There is an update, actually, for one of the... Okay, there's an update for one of the dependencies. I'm willing to bet that that's what it is. We might get that done after this particular uh, this particular launch here. So that would be nice. It's just very convenient to be able to interact with the science experiments in that window. Uh, we don't want to observe this mystery goo here right now. Actually, here is probably fine. And then we grab our barometer, pressure data, and then we grab our thermometer. We'll log that. Okay, we don't get any data from that, but that's okay. And then we recover this. Cool. Okay, what I'm going to do here is we're just going to make sure that X-Science is actually functioning. So I'm going to make a save here now that we've got that 4.3 extra science. We'll save that, and I'm just going to Alt F4 KSP, and we're going to add those updates. Fantastic. CKN should have that done momentarily here. There we go. And actually, let me switch over to display. That's not the right display. Let me switch over to display capture here. There we go. It's a little bit bright because OBS doesn't support HDR. But these are the mods that we are currently running. It's, it's not many. But that's what we've got. Fantastic. So then we'll just go ahead and launch the game. And we'll hop out of here. But, uh... I don't know why OBS doesn't support HDR. It's weird. But that's a, a big problem with OBS, actually. And now that I think about it, that's that's part of the reason why I did not ever... Uh... Well, well, why I haven't done any, like, programming game dev type streams. It's something I've been wanting to do. But OBS not supporting HDR makes that a little bit problematic. I mean, I could turn off the HDR. But that sounds like work. <laughs> but I'm definitely interested in doing some game dev streams at some point, too. I think that works better in a game format than it does in a series format, for sure. Or rather, in a stream format than it does in a series format, for sure. So that's something I've been thinking about doing. But for the time being, that problem is not really an insurmountable one. There are lookup tables that you can do to kind of correct for it. Or you can turn off HDR while doing it. So it's something I'm I'm thinking about doing. Would you guys be interested in a game dev stream at some point? That might be independent of other streams to not take up that time. I don't know. Would that be something you guys would be interested in watching? Let me know. But for now, we'll get loaded back into KSP with those dependencies updated. And at this point, X Science should be working properly, in theory. It's a little weird that it broke there, though, because as far as I know, there wasn't a KSP patch. So that's a little strange. Any moment now, KSP. Any moment. You can do it. Expansion loading is complete. And there we go. Now we're going into the proper game. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll get back into the game. Resume saved of the Interstellar Expedition Incorporated. Cool. And hopefully we won't have to make quite as many uh, physics krakens as the asteroid mining. <laughs> Those loading tips are great. Yeah, KSP has some very exciting ones, for sure. Okay, so here we are back, and uh, we've got ourselves survivability. 
So at this point, we really need to break the atmosphere. With X science here, that should be a lot easier. Let's load up this ship again. And I'm going to put in a heat shield right here, a 1.25 meter. And we'll put our decoupler back. Now that we know the decoupler is there, it should be fine. And this all looks like a decent order. Now, as far as actually getting into orbit goes, we, we don't have access to T200 tanks, but we can do something like this for a second stage. And let's just make these white to uh, be colored a bit more correctly. Uh, there we go. Really, that's the pure white variant? For the service bay? Okay, sure. Well, that's fine. Uh, did we get any extra science? I don't think we did. So that should all be fine. And then as far as the actual lifting portion of this goes. So this is going to be a lot of Delta V once we're in actual orbit. As far as the lifting of this goes. I want at least like a T-800. Bare minimum. And I'd like these to be like gray and orange. I don't know. I think that maybe looks reasonable. Or maybe just dark. Give it like an almost carbon fiber look. Cool. So something quasi along the along the lines of that. And then we can go with like a compact connector or... I don't like the boat tail connectors. I, I think that we'll just go with the, uh, the default. Cool. So what's our thruster weight here? Well, obviously this is in the wrong place. So that would be moved to be about like that. This is reasonably fine. Yeah. That staging looks okay. Except that this is needing to flip around. That's much better. Cool. So our thrust to weight is a little on the high end and I'm going to add more fuel here until that's no longer the case. 1.7. So something like this. 1.61. Cool. That should do the trick reasonably well. Now, we'll see how successful we are at getting into a full-on orbit and getting down again. We do have a KER in this. So we should be able to know our apoapsis and periapsis reasonably well. But let's see how this goes for our first flight here. Our first real flight. We've done a couple of hops and uh, we've already blown up Jeb, so we're off to a great start. Okay. And the reason, of course, that we're going with the uh, Onion Reentry module is because it, A, has a built-in heat shield, although we added our own heat shield here, so it's not that big of a deal. But B, it's a little bit lighter, so that'll be fine. We'll throttle up, SAS on, and let's make our way up. And let's see how this goes. We'll see how far we get here. Cool. Reasonably swift off the pad. And let's start getting ourselves a little bit of horizontal velocity here. Cool. And we can indeed see our apoapsis height thanks to the KER that we have in here. I'm a little surprised that we... Ooh. That moved pretty far off of prograde. We are actually kind of struggling to hold this attitude. Oh, yeah. We're lacking fins. Okay. Okay. Well, looks like that's how far we get. <laughs> we can't hold that attitude. Okay, good to know. So we're going to head back over towards retrograde here, and we'll bring this on down. We'll try to recover as much as we can. Okay. So yeah, we are definitely lacking in our attitude control systems here. Well, that's a reasonable first flight, I think. And uh, we'll just bring this on down. Killing some of that speed here. I'm going to try to propulsively land us. We'll see how that goes. For now, I'm just going to slowly, gently slow us down. We're about 2.2 kilometers up. But we clearly need to have some sort of aerodynamic fins on this. So, looking at our surface here. Cool. Let's 
We'll slow this down a little bit. The round capsules are terrible for aerodynamics. Yeah, that is definitely true. So we will just burn this on down. Not quite that far. Now we're going back up. It wouldn't kill the throttle there for me for some reason, but that's okay. We'll just bring this gently down. Okay, not that gently down. Cool. <laughs> we'll need to find our way over to retrograde. There we go. The lack of aerodynamics here makes this pretty complicated, actually. It wouldn't launch the parachute there. <laughs> well, no, I, I say that. I'm, I'm just blaming, blaming the game for my bad play at this point. Yeah, that was entirely my own fault. And uh, back we go. <laughs> no, I don't want to revert. Uh, can we just go back to the Space Center? There we go. Entirely my own fault there. That recovery, I got greedy on it, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing poorly today, but that's largely because I'm, like, super sleep-deprived. <laughs> Allergies are kind of kicking my butt right now. But we got a bunch of land speed records, so that's all good. So we're going to need a new astronaut, obviously, a new pilot. And we're going to get Cursey here. We will get those others back. Uh, they, they will be back, so that's fine. We're going to hop in here, and we're going to check to see if we can get these aerodynamics a bit more under control. But yeah, I'm... Uh, these basic fins aren't going to be super good for us. They're not control surfaces. They might help us hold the attitude, but let's see if we can get something a little bit better here. I was just too slow on deploying that parachute. So uh, let's see. Stability is what we would need. We need a little bit more science for that. So let's just hop into the VAB here. And we're just going to create ourselves a bit of a science roller. We're going to get rid of this section here. And in fact, this section here. And we are going to ditch this guy. We're just going to go fetch a little bit of science. So we'll rotate, rotate that onto its side. And we'll just roll on over elsewhere. I want to get 18 science here. So we need like three more. It's not very much. Cool. So this will be fine, and our next flight will get us into orbit. Uh, we're going to hop over this way. We're, because of the tapered nature of this, it's going to roll off a little bit here and there. And uh, let's display the X science here and now window. We need to go into here and open here and now window. Because that's literally the only thing that I use X science for, is the here and now window. Uh, and it's not scaled properly. So we'll open the settings window and crank that UI size up to about here. There we go. All good. So we can grab our crew report. That's something we hadn't done yet. We could grab our mystery goo observation, but let's just head off the pad here. All we need to do is head off over this direction. There we go. And grab an EVA report. Uh, all hatches are currently obstructed. So let's do that, grab our EVA report, hop back in, and that should be all we need. Beautiful. It is nice to have X-Science back, that's for sure. Hopefully I can stop playing super badly. Okay, that got us 18 science. That's exactly what we needed for stability, so that's perfect. We'll hop in here and go into the VAB. And we will open back up our Untitled Craft. That's this guy. And once we have this open, we can go into our aerodynamics. All we have here is the winglets and the basic fins still, which is sad. But we can try with some basic fins on here. That'll give us some stability. Let's look at our center of mass versus our center of, or rather our aerodynamic overlay. We'll move this up to be around here. So that'll give us a little bit of stability. And we'll try this again. This time I'm not going to get greedy with it. If if we start hitting a huge tumble again, I'm probably just going to abort the flight with the parachute. Well, let's not be greedy about it this time. Fantastic. Lesson learned. So we will lift this off here and just double checking staging. Yep, that all looks good. Off we go. We'll grab our crew report. We'll grab our atmospheric pressure scan. 
and we'll hold off on the rest for now. And we'll just slowly make our way over here, trying to keep a little bit more towards Prograde. Cool. This is definitely a lot more stable. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to hold around here for the time being. Otherwise, we're going to be way... Okay. Never mind. We can't actually do that. <laughs> Control surfaces are very handy. There's no doubt about that. So, this is okay. We'll just slow on down. And let's go ahead and grab back this parachute. We're going to deploy it. And we're going to land this way. And we can grab all of this data as long as we're here. This is completely fine. This will get us a good amount more in terms of our science. I'm going to turn the SAS off. Cool. We'll do some propulsive landing here. But we're just going to use the parachute primarily. And let's see how much the parachute slows us down by. It'll deploy shortly, right about now. Or no, it deploys at a thousand. That's right. I'm going to start slowing us down preemptively. Okay. The parachute brings us down to about 15 meters per second. We can't EVA, that's right. So we're going to propulsively land this with the, the assistance of the parachute. Much, much better. Cool. Bringing it down to about five meters per second. And that's fine. So we splash down here and we'll be able to get all of this data. So that's actually a good amount of science. Beautiful. We'll grab our atmospheric, or rather our mystery goo observation here. And then we'll EVA. We'll grab our EVA report. Whoa, that's, that was quite the caustics we were seeing there. They uh, stopped. Could barely get under there, but yeah, nice light rays too. Okay, so all of this we can't store anymore. That's fine. We'll recover it, grab our science. And we need to get control surfaces if we want this to be super viable or swap out our cockpit, I suppose. That could happen too. Let's see what our options are here. Um, we're at 26. We could grab general rocketry. That doesn't really help us, although it does save us some money. Yeah, we'll grab that, and we're going to swap out to... Because we don't have control surfaces, we're going to swap out to a more aerodynamically stable cockpit. Okay. So we'll detach this and our parachute as well. We'll ditch that, and we'll put in our command pod. Putting our parachute back on top. Can we color that? No, we can't. Okay. We may as well try to color this basically as dark as we can. And let's go ahead and drop out these two T100s and save a little bit of money by going to a T200. Uh, we'll keep this section light. There we go. And then down here, we're going to drop all of these and swap those over to T200. So that's one, two, three, four, five and a half. So we'll leave this one. One. Oh, this is still connected. Yeah, right there. I'm dumb. I was looking at this highlighted portion. Two, four, and five. I probably should have changed their color before duplicating them, in all honesty, but there we go. So T200s will save us a little bit of money. We'll have exactly the same thrust to weight and delta V. And, of course, we don't have to worry about that detachment there. I still want to put in some fins here. Um, these are a little bit heavier. I'm just checking to see. There is more relative wing area, so they'll make us more stable. Yeah. Something kind of like that. They're a little ridiculous looking, for sure. And there's only a white variant. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and try that. We'll see how stable that is. It's mostly the fact that we were gravity turning a little too hard, but we didn't have the control to counteract the aerodynamic forces, just with the tech that we had. So that's okay. And even if we have to abort into the ocean again, we get a good amount of science from that. 
So this seems fine. Oh, we don't have a pilot on here. Uh, let's revert that back to vehicle assembly. For some reason, it decided Bill is piloting this. I'm not sure why. We'll put Cursey back in here. Perfect. Okay. So let's get this thing launched. Eventually. There we go. And off we go. We'll head on over, but I'm going to try to have this be a little bit less hard of a gravity turn. Yeah. We'll try to just sit here for now. We're turning automatically a little bit. Which isn't necessarily what we want to see right now. But it is happening. Cool. So our apoapsis height is going up here. We just want to push up our apoapsis height as high as we can so that this engine can hopefully take over reasonably efficiently. That is our primary goal right now. Any horizontal speed we can get here is nice, but it's not necessarily good. Like, well, it's good. It's not necessarily what we're really going after. We're just trying to push up our apoapsis as much as possible here. We're through the worst portions of the atmosphere, so I'm going to try holding us a little bit more prograde here. In fact, we're going to start heading over towards the horizon if we can push our way through here. Cool. So we're about to burn out this stage. There we go. And... We're just going to hold here for the moment. 84 kilometers is fine. We'll grab our temperature scan, atmospheric pressure scan, and mystery goo observation. We will have to get all of these things again in space, but that's fine. I'm going to ditch this to get rid of its drag. But we don't necessarily want to fire up this engine just yet. We're going to position over here. And we're just going to hold at this point until we are out of the atmosphere. Cool. I like how I said we're going to drop the drag and then immediately moved horizontally, <laughs> but it's still less drag than I think we would have had with this, so it's fine. Like, we're not taking very much drag here at all. We'll go ahead and physics warp through this last portion of the atmosphere. And there we are. We're now in space. Beautiful. We're going to start pushing out our apoapsis here. Not really aiming to push the apoapsis, actually. We can see our time to apoapsis is dropping right now, which is not necessarily what we want. So we do need to be burning here. Okay. We should be able to get into orbit with this, but I might have needed to start burning a little bit sooner. We'll see. We need like a kilometer per second, so... Uh, that that would be a while. Cool. We're going to physics warp here, and... Yeah, it's, it's going to be, I think... We're going to end up suborbital here. I could probably recover this into an orbital space flight, but I don't actually think there's that much of a point. And the reason for that is because we can't get this science right now anyway. So we might want to just recover this as suborbital. I am going to try to smooth out our re-entry a bit. And in fact, yeah, this is definitely recoverable into an orbital flight. There's no doubt about that. But I don't think I'm going to try too hard at it. Okay. In fact, we're getting there. There we go. We're now orbital. So that is our contract complete. But there's a lot of science here that we haven't gotten. 
We're going to hop around to our retrograde point here. Now, we don't exactly see our prograde and retrograde, but retrograde is about here, prograde is about here. So we're going to burn this down, or more specifically, we're going to go around here. Yeah, I know we're in space near shores. We don't need to stop time warp right now, X science. Thanks. We can't get this science. <laughs> so we're going to hop around to over here, about where the apoapsis is. You, you don't have to play that sound either, thanks. Okay, so we can see our KER apoapsis, actually. So two minutes, one minute, and we're approximately at the apoapsis. Let's flip around to retrograde here. And let's bring this down a little bit. We don't have to bring it down much. So we're 10 seconds away. And I'm going to start a little bit of a burn here. I'm going to take this down to like 30 kilometers. And then we'll arrow break basically the rest of the way. A little bit further. There we go. And we'll just want to park retrograde from here. Fantastic. Hello, Grateful. I'm doing reasonably well, but allergies are a persistent problem this time of year. So at this point, we need to just warp our way back into the atmosphere. Cool. It'll be a bit yet before we get there, and we're going to have to turn around to retrograde. And once we arrive approximately at the periapsis, uh, retrograde, there we go. Once we arrive approximately at the periapsis, then we're going to want to perform our breaking burn. But realistically... Now is probably the better time, although that lowered our periapsis by a lot more than I would have liked. We could try burning, like, radially. Or no, uh, this way. We need to burn this direction. No, that's too far. This direction. There we go. So somewhere, like, over here. Yeah, this radial retrograde burn is the way to go. We'll go a bit more towards radial here, trying to keep our periapsis about where it is. Okay, and that's all we've got. So we're going to ditch this engine and flip back around to retrograde. How are we doing on our electric charge? We're doing okay. That's good. Cool. So from here, this should be a very, very uneventful return. That said, ooh, okay. Doing this with physics warp on is spicy. There we go. That said, it should be fine. This is just a capsule and our service bay. Nothing else. But this will be a large amount of science that we get from this. We are now officially going to be impacting the ground. Let's just flip back around to retrograde here. Cursey cannot lock to retrograde just yet. I think after this flight, they'll be able to. So that'll be good. Cool. That'll mean it'll be a lot easier to lock to retrograde on these re-entries. Going to need to readjust here. There's still a lot of air between us and the ground. You can see here that our impact time is currently allegedly six minutes, but that's going down a lot faster than one second per second. Cool. We're definitely beginning to decelerate. And this is where our heat shield earns its pay. Or more specifically, earns its weight. And we're going to jet... No, I'm kidding. We're not going to jettison the heat shield. <laughs> that would be a terrible idea. To be clear, we might survive it. But it's still a terrible idea. So we're going to just decelerate through here. I'm not going to physics warp this right now because I don't want to fall off of retrograde while we're physics warping. And it's super sensitive to do corrections while physics warping. So we'll bring that on in. I'm just going to move the flight engineer up to like here for purposes of the chat window. Cool. So that is absolutely fantastic. There we go. 
So we're moving at about two kilometers per second horizontally right now. But that's going to start decelerating very dramatically as we start to get into this thicker portion of the atmosphere. I probably should have targeted like 20 kilometers instead of 30. Realistically. 30 is safe, but it's not necessarily speedy. And this thing didn't really need to be all that safe. So there's that. But we are decelerating reasonably quickly. So I think it's okay. Future launches will be able to physics warp this process because we'll be able to lock retrograde and it won't be a problem. Cool. So our impact time is now in about two minutes, allegedly. It'll be maybe a little longer than that in reality, but I will be able to physics warp once we get our speed a little bit more under control here. Once we're less of a ball of plasma, that tends to help. Okay. We're at about 30 kilometers here, moving at 1.7 kilometers per second. Nothing too bad. 1.6 kilometers per second. Are we coming in for a land landing? No, I think we're going to pass over this and land in the water. I would kind of prefer a land landing for science purposes, but our science instruments are full, so there's not really a huge point in that. So that's fine. You know, I'm a little surprised it's actually letting me put the KER on this early, now that I think about it. Like, we don't even have our patch conics but we have KER. We were able to get that without any technology. I feel like that shouldn't really be allowed, but okay. So we're now through the most dangerous portion. We can tumble freely at this point, and that's completely fine. 500 meters per second is our current movement speed. And I'm actually going to put the X science window like up here, I think. Because once we get more pilots and scientists and stuff, they'll fill up that area. Okay. Out goes our parachute, and we're just going to physics warp down from here. Beautiful. Our parachute should have absolutely no problem landing this. And we should get a large amount of science from that. Not the maximal amount of science, but a large amount of science. Six meters per second should be okay. I'd normally have two drogue shoots on here as well. But it's all good. Fantastic. We should be able to EVA for the crew report here. Yep, but we already have it. Oh, right. That was the EVA report. The crew report is already stored in here. We need, an, we need a storage module, that's for sure. We'll go ahead and recover that, though. That was our first orbital flight, so that's always great. That'll get us quite a bit, actually. So, how much science do we have after that one? Any moment now, KSP. You can do it. 80 science. That's a lot. Okay, we'll hop into mission control first. They want us to do a flyby of the moon, but testing the liquid fuel engine at the launch site. That's an interesting one, because that's just free money. We accept that. Beautiful. Okay, so hang on. What, what part was that? Testing the thud. Okay, and we'll also explore the moon. Fantastic. So let's hop into the VAB here, and we're just going to build a really quick and dirty thud tester. So let's create ourselves a new vehicle here, a command pod, and we needed the thud, liquid fuel engine. Do we even need fuel to test these these days? I can't remember if they changed that or not, but I'll toss that in. Cool. And we will not even save that. We're just going to launch it. I believe all we have to do is click the run test button. But it's been a while. Any moment now. There we go. 
cool. Run test. And there we go. Contract complete. So we'll recover that vessel. Beautiful. That would have been a really awkward flight. It would have spiraled immediately out of control because of the thrust vectoring on that one. <laughs> but we now have 81.1 .1 science. And let's see what we want to grab here. So I would definitely not mind grabbing like tail fins. That's a nice control surface for us. I would also love to grab advanced rocketry to get access to the T-400 or basic science for the science junior and the experiment storage unit. Both of those would be very, very good for us. I think the first thing that we get here is the experiment storage unit. Investing in more science is always good, especially when we can get multiple science usages per flight. So our current contract is to fly by the moon. I don't think we're going to do that right now. We're going to go back into orbit once with the same rocket that we just did, but we're going to add in some additional science experiments. So let's open up the untitled spacecraft. Perfect. And we are going to open up our service bay and slot in a science junior up top here. There we go. And did we get another? No, we didn't get another thing here. Okay, so the science junior can't be rerun, but some of these experiments will be able to. So we'll remove this parachute and we will put in an experiment storage unit. And put the parachute back on. Now I'm a little bit concerned about our return velocity with all of this added weight plus this only this parachute lifting us for our return. Reason for that, of course, is because we landed at almost 7 meters per second without the Science Junior and the Experiment Storage Unit. It'll be a little higher than that. We do actually have access to drogue chutes, though. So we're going to toss in our drogue chutes, and now there's going to be no problem. So we'll put this in here. Where is this de this decoupler at? That's an awkward spot for this decoupler to be. Okay, I want the decoupler to be here. Cool. So this is obviously capable of orbit. As long as we're not, you know, dumb about it. I'm just wondering, do I want to change anything else about this rocket right now? Um, I think broadly it's okay. What else would we potentially need on it? We don't need landing legs. We have all the science. I think it's good. So I'm going to give this thing an actual name. And by that, I mean it literally. An actual name. Beautiful. And let's go. Fantastic. So with this out on the pad, the question is, do we now have the uh, do we now have the skill to lock prograde and retrograde? Yes, we do. Beautiful. So with that done, let's go ahead and open up our resources here. Let's run our material study for our 7.5 free science from the pad. We'll keep that experiment and we'll recover it. And in order to really get this good to go, we're going to have to launch at least four more flights of this thing. And that's because we need to grab the flying low, the flying high, and the orbit science from that. So that's going to be slightly tedious, for sure. We'll try to combine some of those together later on, but for now we don't have the ability to do that. Once we can reset the experiment, that'll be a whole different ball game. But we need a scientist along to do that, and we only have one-seater pods for the moment. So that's not really an option. For now, let's take this thing up again, and we're going to get what we can... Actually, we only needed a little bit of science. We can get 1.6 more here. That might be enough to unlock the next level of rocketry. Let's check that. I think that might do the trick. KSP has stopped responding. That's fine. It'll get there eventually. It feels like KSP has a memory leak, and the, 
the longer that the stream goes, the more unstable it'll get eventually, but it should be fine for now. No problem for at least another hour. I'll probably restart KSP at some point, though, just to make sure of that. And now we have 45.3 science, so that's beautiful. We can grab advanced rocketry if we wanted to. We could grab general construction. I don't think there's a good reason to do this right now. We could grab aviation for those tail fins. Or flight control for getting the winglets. That would also give us access to the P re-entry module. Which isn't a terrible idea. That's a really non-terrible idea. I'm going to grab that. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to upgrade our astronaut complex so that we can EVA. Then we're going to hop into the VAB. And we're going to redesign the top section of this a tiny bit. So what we're going to do here is we are going to take this bit out, drop the Mark 1 command pod. Now we're going to run the P re-entry module, which is a two-seater rather than a rather than a one-seater, which means that we're going to be able to bring our scientist along with. That's excellent. Now our aerodynamics are not going to be good, and we definitely want Kersey and Bob here. So we're going to drop the AV-1 winglets. And we are instead going to be bringing control surfaces like the Delta Deluxe winglet. So let's open up our center of mass and aerodynamic overlays here. And we can put that right around here-ish. That should deal with our aerodynamics issues that are caused by this P re-entry module. And that means that we should be able to, once we're in space, EVA and grab ourselves our our orbital research a little bit easier by trimming it down by a flight, more specifically. So we're going to get our flying low material study here. In fact, we might as well grab this one from the pad just so that, that button's not taunting me later on. And we'll recover that. It's a tiny amount of science. Like, that's barely worth doing. It's just to clean it out of that list. Cool. So now we're going to be launching and we're able to reset that science experiment, which is a huge deal because that means that we're now able to launch, grab what we can in flight, and then once we get to orbit, store that in the experiment storage unit, reset them, and do it again. So that cuts down our number of flights to get the science from this a huge amount. So we're going to launch this. I want to make sure that we have our correct Kerbals still before we launch, and I want to double check our staging. Let's see what we've got. It should be Bob and our pilot, whose name I've forgotten already. Uh, let's see here, Kersey and Bob, perfect. And we have lost some thrust to weight, that's for sure. We're a little heavier. This is a swivel that we're running here. I'm wondering if we'd need four Delta Deluxe winglets. That feels like a little overkill. But 1.42 thrust to weight is not amazing. We'll see how close to orbit we get. This is mostly for getting our science in the atmosphere. And if we manage to make it, great. If not, we'll see. I'm not too concerned. So we grab our material study. And I'm also going to grab our Mystery Goo observation here. We'll reset that once we're a little higher up. And yes, it would be more valuable when we are flying high. But for the moment, that's okay. So I'm going to hold attitude here. Mostly, I just want altitude for the moment. We'll hop over to prograde once we are through this thicker portion of the atmosphere. I'm going to close these doors, not that it does anything. And we're going to collect all of our data here. So these are now inoperable, and that's okay. I'm just slowly heading over and correcting into prograde. But our thrust to weight and our delta V are definitely a little lower on this first stage. This first stage is now officially underpowered. So that's the reason why there's concern about whether we end up getting into orbit here. The first stage is underpowered. The second stage should be fine. The question is, can we get the second stage to a point with this first stage where it'll be okay? And the answer to that is, I think, 
not really looking at this apoapsis. Yeah. Not really. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop the shoots right now. I'm going to ditch this stage. Okay. And we're going to fire the shoots. And we're just going to bring this on down. We knew that that first stage was a little bit underwhelming. That's for sure. And we're going to lock this to retrograde. And we'll physics warp this on down. Cool. So we'll need to beef up that first stage a little bit. But that's completely fine. So down we go. We'll grab this EVA report once we slow down a little bit, too. I just want to see how slow we're going to get. Okay. Not too bad. And that's with the second stage attached, so this is going to be a lot slower in the future. We'll have Bob EVA, and he's going to grab an EVA report, and then hop back in. Cool. And now we will physics warp down to the ground. And we'll do just a tiny amount of burn before we get there to slow us down a little bit in hopes of salvaging this engine. We'll see how that goes. But we should be fine here. Oh, yeah. Cool. So we're going to collect everything that we can here. And we're going to grab our crew report, our temperature scan, our atmospheric pressure scan... And we will have Bob EVA here. Uh, we don't need the EVA report, do we? Okay. We don't have to do that. But Bob actually does still need to EVA here. And, oh my. That frame rate under the surface there is not great, but that's fine. All that caustics, probably. We're going to have Bob come on down over here. He's actually going to have to let go. Are you sinking, Bob? No, Bob should not be sinking. Okay. We're going to restore the Science Junior. And then we're going to recover Bob. Uh, actually, I'm going to open this as well. And we'll restore the mystery goo, just to be safe. If I can grab it. Uh, Bob, can you stop spazzing? Thanks. I just want to get over here. There we go. We'll restore that. And uh, we'll move away a little bit. And we'll recover just Bob. So that's fine. No problem whatsoever there. We will need to boost up that first stage a little bit, for sure. We knew that that was weak. So we could SRB it a little bit if we wanted to. That's one way that we could do that. But let's hop into the tracking station here, and we're going to go over... This doesn't need to be here. We're going to go and fly an actual name because we have more science that we can get here. So this is actually going to get us a lot of science, and that's completely fine. That's the point of these particular flights. So we'll load in here. Eventually. Maybe. Game is completely frozen right now. Yeah, it's just not responding. Okay, well, we'll come back to it, I guess. <laughs> I'm just tabbing out here and going into Steam. I'll keep an eye on it. Perfect. Any moment now, KSP. Like, this shouldn't be complicated. May have to restart the game? Maybe. I'll let it sit for a little bit. Uh, let me just open up Task Manager here and see if it's stuck or if it's actually doing something. Do, 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 do. It's just chilling on 238 megs of RAM with and using 5% of the CPU. 0% of GPU. It's not reading the disk. I think it broke. Okay. Well, I'll just close it and we'll restart the game, I guess. Weird. Well, that's fine. I guess start number three. Third time's the charm, right? <laughs> very strange, though. Certainly very strange. Like, there's not even all that much complicated going on right now. 
I don't know. Maybe the uh, X science update is breaking things. That'd be weird, though. That would be very, very weird. Well, we'll load this in and see if we can load in again. Unfortunately, it does take a little while to load. The good news is it doesn't take, like, rogue tech amounts of time to load. So that is absolutely great. And, uh, it'll be done here in a minute. Any moment now. On my screen, oh, you can't actually see the cursor. But on my screen, up in the upper, oh, now you can see it. It was right up here for, like, that. That was where the splash screen was. <laughs> and at definitely the wrong aspect ratio. Beautiful. Okay, so let's get this reloaded back in. KSP is clearly having some issues. Okay, uh, that's the wrong one. We'll load in this guy. And autosave should have been okay, in theory. Because we recovered one, and it autosaves when we recover, I'm pretty sure. So we can come on over here. Yeah, splash down at Kerbin. That seems right. So we'll hop in here, and hopefully it'll load in this time. Rather than just sitting on a black screen forever. Okay, now it's got like four gigs of memory. Yeah. And it just loaded right on in. So KSP definitely had a problem there. Strange. Okay, we'll grab our material study and then we'll recover this as soon as we've got that. Cool. So I guess I should just like plan to restart KSP like every hour or so. I don't know. That's weird. Of course, it didn't do this in some of the previous streams, so maybe that's a fluke. I don't know. At this point, we have 45 science, so we can definitely grab something from this tree if we wanted to. I think advanced rocketry is a good thing to do. So let's go ahead and grab that. That'll at least cheapen down our fuel tanks. So we'll hop into the VAB, and we are going to get ourselves some cheaper fuel tanks. We have an actual ship or an actual name here that we'll go ahead and load in. This is the last version that we launched. And I think that we can maybe get away with going down from four to three Delta Deluxe winglets. Let's take a look at that. Something like this. That'll save us a little bit of weight. And in fact, I don't like the angle I have this at. So we'll just move that to be like here-ish instead. Yeah, that's a much better angle. So that'll save us a little bit of weight. But our thrust to weight is still very low. We are, of course, going to need to take these back off for the time being. And I'm going to go to, I think, three T400s. But we're going to definitely be a little heavy running three T400s. So it'll be something like this. That's a little bit more fuel than we had previously. So if we look at this, 1.39 thrust to weight ratio, it's not great. So we're definitely going to want to strap on like some SRBs or something along those lines. We could also consider taking this up to a T400 if we're going to do SRBs here. Like this craft here should be reasonably capable of doing our moon flyby. So then we would put these guys back on to be like here. Yeah, about there. And we need a little bit more power here. So, I'm actually going to change the angling of these. Hmm. Having there be three is going to make this awkward, actually. But we can... We, we don't have any ability to, like, do fuel lines at this moment. So, I think what we're going to do instead is we're just going to do tri-coupled... Radially attached hammers. Something kind of like this. We can have them... Oh, this is, this is an awkward angle. But we can have them be something kind of like that. And then position them... 
like so. Do we think we need struts here? Well, we don't have access to struts. Do we think that we want aerodynamic nose cones on them? That's probably worthwhile. Okay. So that would just get us a decent boost off the pad. That's a huge thrust to weight ratio, as is. We bring this in and it's 3.17. So we can thrust limit these down heavily. Down to be... Somewhere around like 37.5%. Yeah, about there. Something kind of like that. 1.39 is fine. I designed most of my rockets to have about 1.35 off the pad. It makes for a nice majestic initial climb. Yeah, it works just fine. I just like to target 1.6 because it moves things a little bit faster and you spend less fuel f fighting against gravity. I target 1.6 personally, but you can make 1.35 work absolutely fine. I want to have it be about like this. We needed more power in this first stage because we essentially, the, the main problem wasn't the thrust to weight ratio. The main problem was that we had both a low thrust to weight ratio and a low amount of overall delta V in the stage. That was the, the core issue there. So we needed to add additional power to this stage in either the form of additional delta V without reducing the thrust to weight ratio too much further, which is very difficult to do, or by increasing the thrust to weight ratio and also increasing the delta V, which is what we ended up going for. Now we don't have access to struts, so I'm concerned about these guys wiggling around too much. We'll see how that ends up going. But let's go ahead and launch this as is. Oh, we uh, we have too many parts, I think. Yeah, we have too many parts, so we need to upgrade our launch pad. That's fine. No problem whatsoever there. So we'll go ahead and upgrade that. And now we can launch it. Oh, th that wasn't the launch pad that we needed to upgrade. We needed to up upgrade the VAB. I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> that's fine. We eventually needed to upgrade the launch pad too. So that's okay. We'll upgrade the VAB. That was a huge amount of our cash. So we're definitely going to need to grab ourselves a contract here of some sort. Hmm. The speed is going to be the awkward portion here. Do we have enough to launch this? No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> well, that's going to make things interesting. We're going to have to do one of these contracts then instead. I was planning on doing the moon flyby here, but I upgraded the wrong thing instead. So what are we going to do? Uh, the flea in flight over Kerbin. That's pretty slow at a pretty... Well, that's, a, that's an okay speed. Haul the thumper into flight above Kerbin. That speed is not going to be a thing at that altitude. I can tell you that right now. We could test the TD-18. That would give us an advance. The speed is the only question that I have. We're not going to be going that slowly at this altitude. However, we could grab it primarily as a loan. And if we're going to do that, then we take this one. So fundamentally, this is a loan. We're not planning on actually doing this. Okay. So we take that so that we can launch and get this done. Cool. So off we go. We're going to launch an actual name here. I am a little bit concerned for sure about how we're doing on our SRBs here. Like how wiggly are they going to be? We'll see. They're going to burn for a good long time. And these do have gimbaling as well. So we should have a lot of good aerodynamics. In all honesty, we may not need the Delta Deluxe winglets with these in here. But I'll run them anyway. 
and let's get off this path. Cool. We'll grab our material study. We'll reset that once we get into orbit. And let's start our gravity turn here. Fantastic. And from here, I'm just going to lock prograde. There we go. Now this is going to be exciting because we don't have patch conics and we don't have maneuvers. So that's certainly going to be very interesting. <laughs> we'll see how this ends up going. We are tumbling. Okay, this is a really bad time to be tumbling. Because we're out of money. That's... Incredibly unfortunate. Okay. Well, this might actually just be a straight up fail at this point. Because we might run out of money here. Like, we are basically out of money. Let's see if we have enough to try that one more time. It was my own fault that we messed that up. I was trying to correct. We were drifting upwards. I tried to correct it downwards, and we just tumbled. And I didn't think that we would tumble in that situation when we had burning quadruple gimbals and Delta Deluxe winglets. I didn't think that drifting off of the prograde node by, like, three degrees would cause a tumble like that. That was kind of wild. But okay. So we'll flip this around to retrograde, and we'll bring this on down, and we'll see how much money we have. But, I mean, I've obviously made a ridiculous number of really stupid mistakes. <laughs> I blame it on the sleep deprivation, but here we are. So we'll bring this down. And this speed is reasonably okay, but we're definitely going to need to push this down a little bit more as we come in. We're going to recover the vast majority of this rocket. Okay, let's just get this to slowing down. There we go. Cool. So everything survives. And let's go ahead and recover that. Actually, let's grab our mystery goo observation as long as we're here. Might as well get some science. There we go. But yeah, the uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing the sleep deprivation isn't really helping right now. <laughs> but it's okay. If we have to restart, we have to restart. It's, in fact, I could just reload it back to that load that we were at there. Actually, we're at 28,000. Interesting. So we can try that again. For sure. But yeah, I really didn't expect to tumble that much with this aerodynamic control. This much aerodynamic control. That's insane. So we can launch this again. We're fine. And let's just get this into orbit. And we need to get that flyby of the moon done. That'll make us a lot of money. And KSP isn't responding. This is just not my day, but there we go. <laughs> We're good. Cool. Off we go. Honestly, I might just take it straight up this time. Until the SRBs are off. That's the way I used to run SRBs before they added gimbling to them. Or at the very least, a very shallow gravity turn here. So something kind of like this and then just lock to prograde. Just incredibly shallow on it. Okay. Just want to make our way through most of the atmosphere so we don't have to worry about that. Sounds good. I want it to be a little less shallow than this. Okay. Man! 
with four gimbals and Delta Deluxe winglets. That is insane, isn't it? Like, that's just crazy to me that we get off of prograde that much with four gimbals and winglets and we tumble. But I mean, we're still actually in a decent attitude here. This might be recoverable. So we'll give it a go. Um, we don't have a, we, we lost a lot of our vertical speed from that. So I think we'll just, I mean, it is recoverable. Until we get to here and completely tumble. Okay, man, aerodynamics are really going crazy here. Is it just me or is this really different aerody aerodynamics than normal? Like, that's insane. I mean, this isn't gimbaled. And we don't have a reaction wheel on here. That's that's a part of it, for sure. But something feels really weird about these aerodynamics to me. I don't know. Regardless, we're going to grab our crew report. We're going to grab our material study from Flying High. And our mystery goo observation. And this upper stage is clearly an issue. There's no doubt about that. But let's just go ahead and warp down a bit here. I mean, it feels like it should have stayed at prograde or close to it, but I guess it's fine. So do we have our drogues armed right now? I don't know. They're hard to click on. That's the experiment storage unit there. Let's look at it this way. Okay. Drogues, please. Oh, I combined those together. That's awkward. Well, this is definitely not my take. <laughs> oh, they're all combined together at this point. I'm, I don't know. I My level of competence today is like three out of 100. I'm at like 3% competence today, it would appear. Perfect. Maybe KSP isn't my game for today. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, we are coming up on the midway point of this stream. Maybe we should consider either a restart or we should consider switching to a less Less strenuous game for my, my poor head, which apparently can't think. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless, we'll land this. These Kerbals are fine, but we don't have money. So that's the thing. I've made a lot of mistakes. Like, a ridiculous number of mistakes. I don't have really any excuse for that other than my, my head's clearly not in it. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll recover this and we'll see how much cash we have at this point. I am wondering what's going on with that tumble, though. Is, oh, I bet I know what it is. Let's head into the VAB here. I don't think I rechecked the height of our aerodynamic point compared to our center of mass after I added on the SRBs. I bet you that's what it is. Yup, that's exactly what it is. Look at that. That's the problem. So, I'm dumb. We knew that. We can actually attach these to the SRBs if we wanted to, but having them, like, down here would definitely be better. We want them to be... Like, our center of mass is very low right now. We should probably move the SRBs up in all actuality and have it be, like, up here. And then move this to be, like, here. That was the problem. I never checked that. That was 100% my own fault. Now, we don't have the cash to launch this again. And that explains why the aerodynamics felt so weird.
one million percent there. So, what can we do to get cash? Honestly, there's kind of nothing. There's kind of nothing we can do at this point to get more cash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert this back to when I accidentally up upgraded the launch pad. So we're going to go back to... Or actually, this, qu this quick save is all we have, apparently. Let's see what we have here. Well, we're stuck at that position, so I'm just admitting defeat there. Uh, we have 89,000. This is the quick save when we loaded back in the game, right? No. I'm confused. When is this quick save? We haven't upgraded, but we only have 90,000. Is this super early? I think this is super early. It is. Like, this has invalid parts that we can't put on the pad. Okay. Well, the saves appear to be borked. This is just not my day. Wow. Okay. I'm not doing well at all here. <laughs> Let's go back to the main menu. And maybe we should go for a bit of a sandbox experience here. Wow. I'm just... I'm not doing well. <laughs> let's load in this sandbox game and let's just try to do a kind of fun flight, right? Like, clearly my head isn't in it for a career mode right now. That's just the way it is, I guess. Ugh. Note to self, don't try to do career mode KSP on like three hours of sleep. Okay. So we're going to hop into the VAB here, and let's just make ourselves something that's fun, right? So what do we want to do for fun here? Actually, let's hop into the tracking station and plan out a mission here real quick. I just want to do something that's a little bit more fun here and less uh, incompetence. There we go. So this is just a sandbox mode. This is the one that we did the Artemis mission in in a previous stream. I think we should maybe think about a visit to like one of the planets that aren't visited very much. Like maybe Dress. I've gone to Dress like once in the solar system tour. That was a really long time ago. Maybe we should revisit that. We could do that. So let's, let's create ourselves a lander for that and head on over there. I think that'll be a reasonable amount of fun. Cool. Okay, so we're going to want to bring probably three. I'm not going to leave, like, base components there. This is sandbox mode. There's not a huge point of that. But we're going to go there. We're going to visit Dress. We're going to fly around a bit, and then we will return home. I think that'll be the overall plan there. So this won't be a particularly intense thing. So this is a Mark 1-3 command pod here. That's a big boy for sure. And what size of fuel tank is that? Not Kerbidine, that's for sure. Is this Rockamax? Yeah, that's Rockamax sized. Okay, so a lander here, a Rockamax X-16 tank like that, and then like a poodle engine, would that have sufficient thrust to weight to land on dress? I don't actually know. So let's check that as soon as I actually find the poodle in the list. There we go. So looking at dress here, this has a thrust to weight of 16. So that's a lot. Of course, this has to be responsible for returning us home as well. So I'd like to have a bit of a ladder here. Trainwreck KSP is the most entertaining KSP. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm glad you're entertained. I'm... I'm feeling very discombobulated right now. There's no other way around it. Okay, let's get ourselves a ladder here. And let's position that right about here. Perfect. That should be good enough. And this is definitely a big lander. No doubt about that. We're going to plop a Mark 25 parachute there for returning this home. And does this have a built-in ablator? No, it does have a built-in reaction wheel. So that's good to know. We'll put in a heat shield here. 
and that's going to need to be a 2.5 meter heat shield. This is all we're going to be bringing back. I'm not going to be bringing like massive science experiments or anything like that. So this will be fine. We'll put in our coupling here of a TD25. There we go. And do we want to make this a wide boy? Probably. I often do make my landers a wide boy because I like to distribute the center of gravity as low as possible. So we can have this be, I think I'd want them to be a little closer together. Something kind of like this. And then we put another T-16, or rather an, another X-216 set of tanks here, kind of like that. Uh, that's not quite the angle that I wanted them at, so we'll just position it like that. There we go. We'll strut those all together. There we go. And we will grab ourselves our fuel light. Now I'm willing to bet that this is going to have substantially less fuel or substantially less thrust to weight ratio over dress. What is this? So for stage three, it is 4.29. That's still plenty of thrust to weight like this. That's kind of nutty. So we can put in some TD25 decouplers here. Launching this is going to be exciting, unless we do. There we go. Never played KSP, but I like the stream. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm not playing competently, so. <laughs> if you're interested in competent KSP, you can watch some of my series where I'm definitely way better at it, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm not doing so well right now. We definitely need some aerodynamic nose cones here, and these are going to be, like, hilarious. Yeah, they're, they're really tall. Those are really small. Uh, do we have ones that are, like, not ridiculously tall, but are the right radius? Because, I mean, that's pretty funny looking. You know what we could do? Hmm. Yeah. We could run... Not those these guys. Those are fuel tanks, but they're also rounded. Cool. I wonder if they'll be good aerodynamically. We can find out. So we can definitely swap over to having these be like a different color. Isa is an interesting choice here. It's really more brick than anything. We could have them be orange. I don't think that's useful. Um, having them be white is not awful here. So I think we'll have them be white, and this is fine as is. We're probably going to want drogue shoots on this, for sure. That's something I should remember to put on. Uh, let's put on some radial mount drogue shoots. Failing is integral part of the fun in KSP. That is true. That is true. But I like to at least pretend to be competent. <laughs> okay, uh, we don't need quad drogue shoots. Two drogue shoots should be sufficient to slow us down enough to fire up our main. So that should be fine. We're going to need power on this, for sure. So let's put in some... These photovoltaic panels are probably too much, and we're going to need to be able to retract these. So maybe just something kind of like this. Do I hate the angling? I kind of hate the angling. We could put them here. They actually fit in there pretty neatly. Okay, we'll do it. So there's our solar panels. And from here, we definitely need to be able to land. So we need some landing struts. We'll put in big ol' LT2s to hopefully be able to reach nicely. Do we need more vertical drop there? It's close. So we can uh, put in some modular girder segments here if we wanted to and rotate those a little bit to be more along the lines of... That's not quite the rotation I was looking for. There we go. More along the lines of that. And what if we were to deposit these guys right on like this? I mean, that's definitely a lot more clearance. When we retract them, they'll clip up into the fuel tank, but that's probably okay. I don't really like where this fuel line is going in, so I'm going to change this one to be like that. There we go. 
That's much, much cleaner. Cool. So that would be our lander there, in theory. And that would also be responsible for getting us back to Kerbin. Which could be interesting. We'll see how that ends up going. I'm completely winging this. We're not doing any Delta V calculations. I'm just flying entirely by gut here. We may fail. <laughs> Failure, as evidenced by this stream thus far, is always an option. Okay, so we're going to definitely put in... I, I, I'm thinking about a Jumbo 64, but this is so much overkill. It's so much overkill. I think we're going to go for a T32. This is going to be, like, ESA styled There we go. And this is going to be... I was thinking about another poodle. A corgi would be funny, but... That's not really going to fit there. A mammoth would be hilarious. That's really, really terrible idea. Out of curiosity, let's uh, double check our thrust weights here. Yeah, that looks okay. And what if we dropped this poodle? I'm sure a terrier is too weak, right? This is way too weak. It's barely too weak. Okay, let's check ISPs. So our ISP is 345 vacuum, and for the Poodle, the ISP is 350. So the Poodle is the more efficient engine. Okay, so we'll run a Poodle. I just was thinking about not doubling up our Poodles here. So stage five, uh, this is going to be over Kerbin currently. At maximum, at maximum here. So 739 Delta V is not much here. I was hoping that that would get us a little bit further. One thing we could do though, is we could consider running a nuclear upper stage instead. We drop off the oxidizer, which is the majority of the weight in this Rockamax tank. We drop that off and instead we go for like a Cherenkov. That's 820 specific impulse. It's huge. And also only 720 meters per second. I expected that to be a little bit higher. I'll be honest. It's very good specific impulse to be sure, but that's not really gonna work. So I think for this, for this stage here, we're instead going to think about. I think I'm still going to go for the T2 or for the 32, and then I'm also going to toss in a 16. We'll do ESA styling for both of them, and then we'll go ahead and run the poodle since the specific impulse isn't really affecting that much, and the Trinikov was so huge. So we'll run this instead. That's only a thousand meters per second, but that's okay. This is intended to be the interplanetary transfer stage. And I feel like it can be more efficient than that. I mean, this is a really heavy lander. Don't get me wrong. I'm not shocked by it, <laughs> but it's a really heavy lander. So in that case, I think with this being the interplanetary transfer stage, we're going to need to plan for our first stage to be really powerful since this thing is so heavy. So, we're going to need something along the lines of, like, an SLS on steroids is what we're going to be looking at here. Speaking of which, you, you guys should watch the SLS launch tomorrow morning. It's, uh, in my channel's time, it's at 7.33 in the morning tomorrow. You should watch that. Uh, that is in central daylight time. And uh, what would that be in, like, relative to my video coming out? That's, like, three and a half hours after my uh, my Europa video comes out. Highly recommend it, if you can catch it. So we're going to do something kind of like this. If we were to try to lift this with just a single mainsail. What's that thrust to weight? 0.83. That's actually better than I expected. That is better than I expected. Can we style this, Isa? No, we can't. Sad. Can we style it here, Isa? No. Well, maybe. Uh, kind of Isa adjacent. 
but sure. Okay, so this thrust to weight is 1300, and we're definitely going to want to strap on some SRBs here. We need more boosters. Th th this is correct. More boosters. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to hop in here, and we are going to grab... I think I'm going to use TT-70s, just to give us more distance here. And we're going to kind of cover up these tank... Or no, we're not going to cover up the lines. We're going to do something kind of like this. And we are going to use some big ol' SRBs. Clydesdales? Why not? Clydesdales are fun. They're ridiculous. They're also fun. You know, if we're going to do this, we may want to bring in another Jumbo 64. Like that. What's that thrust to weight? 1.72 is a little bit overkill on the thrust to weight. So we'll drop this down to about here. And actually, we'll drop it down to about here because I like to have it be a quasi Korolev cross when it uh, decouples. We'll bring this up to be not there. I, I want to actually move this and place it more like here, uh, down a bit. It needs to be down a bit more from there, but we'll grab the move tool and move this on down. There we go. That's good. Cool. Now we'll need some aerodynamics on it. Just launch, it'll be fine. Famous last words. Uh, we're going to use like these nose cones and they could be white. That's completely okay. So this is definitely like a giant SLS, right? except with quad boosters instead of two. And then this stage is a little bit overpowered, but, well, f overpowered for an SLS, but it's way underpowered for what we've got going on here. Now, our overall Delta V here is okay. It's okay, just okay. But if we do this, What is our thrust to weight? 1.72, so we can back off our Clydesdales slightly to about 91%, 93%, 93 looks good. Cool. Now, how much spinny are we expecting here? Uh, there may be some. SLS should launch at 29 August 2022 at 1233 UTC. Yes. In my local time zone, that is 7.33 in the morning. So, I, I highly recommend that you guys watch that. That's going to be a big launch. Fantastic. So, I think we're about ready to launch this. Who do we want to bring along? Who is our uh, lucky recipients? Well, of course, it's Jeb, Bill, and Bob. Who else is it going to be? Let's go visit Dress or run out of fuel along the way, one or the other. <laughs> Let's go. Do you play SFS? Um, probably not, because I'm not sure what you mean by SFS. Let me Google that quick. SFS. The School for Field Studies. Oh, Space Flight Simulator. No, I don't play that. Um, that's not something I've ever tried. Might be something I'm interested in trying sometime. Okay, we'll throttle up, SAS on, and off we go. Oh my. <laughs> I didn't strut it together. I knew I was forgetting something. Okay, we'll revert that back. Beautiful. That was amazing off the pad. That was amazing. Absolutely incredible. So the problem is we didn't strut these. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, we'll do that. And we will strut them up here as well. There we go. And then, oh, this is not in quad symmetry. That would help. We'll get that symmetry done. Basically 2D KSP. Interesting. I might have to try that sometime. I'm actually kind of making a game that's kind of similar to that, but it's not really that. So we'll put our struts in down here. If I can get a good angle. There we go. Cool. So I hope you guys are happy with that explosion. It was a nice one. And uh, from here, we should be nicely strutted together. So let's give this another go.
That was quite an explosion, actually. I wasn't expecting it to ex explode quite that spectacularly, quite that quickly. Like, thinking back on it, sure, it should have exploded without struts there. Absolutely. But, uh, maybe not that quickly. Ah, much better. So off we go here. Probably should have double-checked double my staging here. You're making a game? Uh, yeah, I am, but it's, um, very early. <laughs> Rapid unscheduled disassembly. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we'll lock to prograde here, and let's check our staging as long as we're up here. That's something I should have done earlier, but, uh, we can combine these together. That's fine. And all of that looks okay. Cool. So we've got a lot of speed here. No doubt about that. And it's really not, like, I, I know I said it's kind of similar to, like, a 2D, a 2D KSP. It's not really. It has kind of a, a physics model that's sort of similar, but it's intended to be more of, like, an action-style game where, like, you're you're fighting enemies in in that sort of gravitational environment as, like, a, a character action sort of thing. I don't even know how to code. It's actually super simple. I might make a, uh, a a bit of a tutorial at some point. We're drifting off of pro or off of the 90 degree marker here, and we're definitely moving pretty quick. So uh, I'm going to cut our main engine. We have a lot of altitude here. Okay. I'm going to detach our SRBs and get us some distance. There we go. Cool. Let's head over to the horizon, but we have way more height than we need, and we need more horizontal speed. We're now in space, so I'm going to go ahead and extend our solar panels. Not that they're going to get us too much right now, and our electric charge is not amazing. But, I mean, this is a good start, actually, because we're getting a lot of high-efficiency stuff here, but this is more altitude than we needed, that's for sure. Okay. So we're just heading to the horizon right now. And, oh yeah, we have access to maneuvers. That's awful handy. So we're going to do something along the lines of this. Yeah, that looks good. That's more than enough altitude. So we'll just walk to our maneuver note. There we go. Fun fact, the developer of SFS was 17 when he created the game. Well, good for him. I, uh, when I was 17, I was also creating games and never got one finished. <laughs> Fantastic. So we're going to need to start this burn in about three minutes. That's fine. We'll get into position and we'll warp for it. We turn very, very slowly right now. And we'll continue to turn pretty slowly, honestly. But it'll be a lot faster than this in the future. I probably should have considered adding in a reaction wheel up here. A big old reaction wheel. Like a 2.5 meter one. But it is what it is. Cool. So we'll go ahead and warp over to this. And we're hoping to get some sun here pretty soon. Yeah, it's coming up. So it's all good. There we go. And we'll start our burn here in about five seconds. Sun is coming up, but we have an alternator on this engine, so it's not a big deal. Burn starts now. And are we going to get this entire thing into orbit with this stage? I think we are. So our interplanetary stage is going to be actually interplanetary, but it's still pretty underpowered. And we knew that. We're just seeing how far we get here. We might be able to get there. There's a lot of Delta V in this upper stage up here in, in the lander. There's a lot of Delta V there. So that's great. Eight hundred meters per second left to burn here. This is a pretty lengthy burn. I'm gonna go ahead and physics warp it. Cool. 500 meters per second to go. 
And we did use a lot of Delta V on altitude there. But, I mean, we're going to need that altitude anyway, eventually. So we'll just circularize this approximately. Okay, that's approximate. But it's good enough. We have 13 meters per second left in this tank. I'm going to freeze our physics to kill that rotation. And then we'll head back to prograde for now because this will eventually be a prograde burn. But we're going to gravity assist around the moon and our starship HLS is still there. Hilarious. We'll add a maneuver here. What's this meters per second stuff? Uh, that I'm talking about the delta V that we have here. So you can see here that we have 13 meters per second here. And that means that this engine with this amount of fuel can push this craft 13, or it can accelerate this craft by 13 meters per second in whatever direction you want it to go. And the, the term for that is delta V, or uh, change in velocity. So we'll set the moon as our target for now, but we actually don't need to. We've got our encounter here. Um, this is an awkward gravity assist. How's that looking? That's a good one. That's a good gravity assist there. Okay. Only 700 meters per second. Eh, 740. To break out of the Kerbin system. I like it. Granted, a lot of that is because our orbit is at 300 kilometers. It would be like 100 more meters per second. To be fair. So we'll align for that burn, which will be in about 30 minutes. There we go. Cool. So we're aligned here, and let's warp on around. Also, our uh, solar panels are blocked by these guys. I probably should have thought about that. <laughs> That's my own fault. If we have to, we can move them, though. Like, we can have, we can have uh, Bill jump out and move them, so that's not a big deal. We'll start our burn in about a minute here. We'll go ahead and warp towards that. Ten seconds. And let's burn here right about now. So there's those 13 meters per second gone. And now our interplanetary transfer stage is going to do some work here. Not a huge amount, though. We're going to burn most of our interplanetary transfer stage on exiting the Kerbin system. So that's going to be interesting. We'll see how much... I, I mean, I think we have enough. I really do. I mean, we've got another seven kilometers per second here. If that's not enough to get to Dressen back, then I'm upset. <laughs> So this is going to be a pretty lengthy burn of about three minutes. Let's physics warp that so that we don't have to sit through that whole thing. Cool. Jeb, Bill, and Bob are very happy. They don't know about my concerns about Delta V. But honestly, I always overbuild everything, and I'm always still concerned about Delta V. So, But I didn't consult any sort of a Delta V chart for this. I don't know what it'll take to get there and back. I'm, I'm thinking we have enough. Probably. Okay. One more minute of burn time here. And off we go to the moon. Next time, make a Delta IV. Now, you could be talking about a Delta IV Heavy. Or you could be talking about Delta IV instead of Delta V, which rhymes with Delta III. I like to choose to assume that you're talking about that and not a Delta IV Heavy. <laughs> a Delta IV Heavy could have done this for sure. But uh, I, I don't know. I, KSP doesn't let you set it on fire when you lift it off. So I feel like it's just not very true to the actual Delta IV. <laughs> So let's go ahead and rotate this thing a little bit so that our electric charge is, you know, not as bad. It's still going to be a little bad. But let's position it about like so. We have our flyby of the moon. And that'll be great. So let's position up over here. We'll warp on over. Yeah, the Delta IV Heavy. Unfortunately, you can't set it on fire as you lift it off in KSP. If you could, I'd build so many Delta IV heavies. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so here we are in the gravitational influence of the moon. And now we will slingshot on around. Cool. Thanks for the assist, moon. And now we will escape the Kerbin system with that gravity assist. So our next location to warp to will be around here. That's about a week away. Luckily, we don't have to worry about these guys breathing anything. There we go. There are mods for that if you're interested in having to simulate life support. I generally don't. But there we are. We are now out of the Kerbin system, and we are now in orbit around the sun. We've got about 300 meters per second left in this stage. That might... Heavy on the might. Oh, we, uh, we kind of flung ourselves the wrong way. <laughs> we should have looked at that. But we might have enough to get ourselves... Five degrees? That's quite a lot of degrees. Okay. We'll have to burn... Normal here. Yeah, that's quite a lot of degrees. Eight hundred and sixty meters per second. Well, let's see how it goes. We'll get lined up for it, and we can get about almost not quite half out of our interplanetary transfer stage. We still have a lot left out here, right? And if we end up burning up these side tanks, and we want to ditch them, then we can just move these legs over to our main tank. So that would be the plan there. You do not have KSP. KSP is an excellent game. I highly recommend it. I'm not playing it competently right now, but sometimes I do. And when that happens, we get things done. <laughs> when I don't play it competently, this happens. <laughs> Fantastic. So we're going to burn this in about a minute. And that's going to be done right about now. Five more seconds until that burn. Cool. And off we go. This is going to be another fairly lengthy burn. So we'll physics warp it. I didn't like the way these guys moved. But I guess it's fine. You don't play because you don't have a PC. Ah, that would do it. KSP does exist on consoles, but I hear that it's not very good on consoles. Like, the console port is awkward at best. Oh my. Okay. We're not going to physics warp that. I should have strutted this to the actual craft. I mean, we could still fix that. Hmm. Am I the only one talking? Apparently, right now. There were a few earlier, but uh, they they may have tuned out for the moment. So we've got about a minute left on this burn. And we are getting some power through here. And this engine has an alternator as well. So I'm not too concerned about power, all things considered. Let's get our inclination change done, and then we'll look for an encounter. We didn't time our launch to be most efficient either. So that's also something we could do. I tried KSP on PS4 and it was not fun at all. Yeah, I've I've heard that the console ports just don't go very well. Okay, 10 more seconds left in this burn. Beautiful. 30 meters per second, 20, 10, and that's probably good enough. Is that good enough? Yeah, that's good enough. Cool. So dress is our target here. We may want to push out at the periapsis. Okay. We're just looking for timing here more than anything. Looks like our timing is going to be around here. Okay. What's that looking like for the encounter? We can fine tune this. Uh, that's very polar. 
So we'll bring that down a little bit. And this periapsis is pretty low. That's good. We want that to be pretty low. Uh, do we know? We don't know. Oh, that's resources. I want to know what the atmosphere is. There is no atmosphere here. Okay, so there's no arrow breaking that's going to happen. How much would this break end up being? We can probably find a more efficient uh, encounter than this. This is, this is a pretty hefty break, and just getting here is 2,300 meters per second. And then this maneuver for the braking maneuver would be another 1,900. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. I think we're going to find a better encounter here. So let's go ahead and focus on, well, the sun for now. And let's get rid of this encounter. I don't like this encounter. We're going to circularize here. Or approximately circularize. Uh, let's see here. So that would be something like this. If we did it at the apoapsis. Cool. So if we circularize there, that should make it a little bit easier for us to find an encounter. So let's do that. Pushing out. We might want to gravity assist around Duna, actually. We're in a bit of an awkward inclination for that, perhaps. Five degrees off. Let's see if we can find anything for that. It's a little late to plan to do this, I suppose. Yeah, it definitely is. We may not be able to get back. We can definitely get there. We'll see. If we have to do a rescue mission, that's not the end of the world. Can I get rid of this? Thank you. Okay. So if we go to dress here. I would love to push out from the periapsis, but... As it is, pushing out from the apoapsis is probably going to be our best bet. So I want to change our timing here. Our timing is what really needs to change. If we did our timing here, that's much better timing. How's that? Okay. From here, what would it look like to do a braking maneuver? It'd be a lot. It'd be a whole lot. 1700 That is cheaper. That's definitely cheaper. Let's look at... Bringing this down a little bit or rather bringing it up this direction towards the horizon so bringing our inclination a bit more in line with dress to be about here and we could bring it in like so if we really wanted to but you can see we have a lot of velocity here by the limited curvature that dress is putting in. So we want to have less relative dress velocity when we get there. That's for sure. So if we wanted to have less relative dress velocity, we would really want it to be basically at the apoapsis like this. Even that's a lot of velocity. No doubt about that. But if we can pull this back a little bit. I'm trying to bring it back in. Okay. And then a little bit radial here. Or actually anti-radial. There we go. And then a very minimal break. I don't think this is the way we want to go. I think we want to go the opposite direction. But I want to double check this. 
So let's see what we've got here. A minimal break at that point would be 1,800 meters per second. That's a lot. So we definitely want to fine-tune it from here. Are we coming in retrograde? I mean, that kind of matters, actually. That's prograde. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely operating on three hours of sleep here. <laughs> no doubt about it. But let's bring this on in about like that. Yeah, I, th I think we just need to uh, find ourselves a different timing altogether. So let's get rid of this. This maneuver can go away. And we're going to find ourselves a different timing for it. So. I would like... I'm just looking at our inclination right now for potential options. They're minimal. We should have probably slingshotted around Duna before we did our inclination change. I'm just going to circularize here. Pushing this out. That's like 300 and some meters per second. So that's not so bad. We'll do that. And that will give us more options on when we take this timing. Looking at Dress's orbit here, it's not as big as like Elu's. That's for sure. But this is Jewel. Uh, we want to transfer like over here. So, we're actually pretty close to that already, aren't we? That's when we were transferring. So we set this as our target, and okay. So we can see this is basically when we want to do our transfer window. And we want to wait here. That is huge changes per orbit. Okay. That's exciting stuff. So the best that we can do here, I think, given that, is perhaps, oh, I didn't mean to close that, perhaps have it be sometime around, oh, there we go. Oh, can I press the button? Thanks. Sometime around here. So any way we slice it, the transfer here is going to be about 2,200 meters per second. So I think we basically at this point have to give up with coming home. <laughs> and uh, we can call them dress colonists. So let's bring this down. To be about... About here-ish. And then continue bringing it in, not that in, to about here. We can continue fine-tuning that a little bit. That's only four kilometers out. That's hilarious. We're, we're not going to be quite that close in. Okay. Something kind of like this could work. What would that look like for our break? In order to circularize that would be 1,700 meters per second. That's about the best we've seen. So I think that's fine. I do want to fine tune this positioning a little bit more because we're still pretty low here. So I want to bring this up to be about... That's still too high. Man, that's sensitive. That's very sensitive. About here. That'll do. If we're giving up on bringing these guys home, then that's fine. Uh, we can try and see how far we get and maybe send a rescue mission if we've got time. 
we'll see. But we're going to need to warp around to there, and I don't have the increased warp speed on right now, so we can only go at 100,000 X. It's going to take us a little bit to get this warping done, so I recommend uh, grabbing yourself a beverage, and uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to do the same. I will be right back. Let me go into break mode here, and we will be back when this warp is over. <laughs> 